Hi, I'm Jacques Pupin. And today we're probably making the most versatile of all kind of dough, which is called the patachou, the cream puff dough. Nothing to do with the puff paste dough, which is a, a layer of... Uh... So the cream puff dough, I can count at least 20 different types of dessert you do with it. Not only dessert, but you are also do savory dish with it, which we'll do a couple. I have a cup and a half of uh, milk here, and uh, six tablespoons of butter, and you have basically the same amount of, uh, same amount of milk than flour that we're going to add to it, and eventually the eggs. Often you will see that in the oven, sometimes we do the patachu the size of a pea, you know, in the oven, that make a garnish for a consommé. Then you do it the size of an olive, when it grow up, what they call a profit roll. You know, stuff it usually with an ice cream or, or chocolate sauce and so forth. Then you do it bigger and it's a choux. You know, a choux à la crème, usually done with the whipped cream in it. If you do it the long way, it's called an éclair. You know, like lightning, the long way. If you do a little ring of it too, it's called a puits d'amour, a love nest. If you do a big ring with it, you know, all around like this, it's called the Paris Brest, in reference to a, to a bicycle race from Paris to Brest, so it had that shape. If you do the Saint Honoré, the classic cake is done on a piece of dough, and the shoe are placed right on top of it and filled up, and the sander is done with a pastry cream and, uh, and so forth. This is only a few of the desserts you do with the pâte à choux. And then you take the same pâte à choux and you poach it, because the pâte à choux itself, you put a dash of salt in it so there is no seasoning. If you do as we're going to do with cheese in it, in the oven, uh, maybe a bit of paprika, then it's called gougère, a kind of very famous kind of a first course now, or bistro type of dish. You know, if, however, I take those and I push it in boiling water, take it out, that will be a gnocchi, the gnocchi Parisian, the Parisian gnocchi done with a cream sauce usually in the oven. If I fry it in there, and uh, seasoned with sugar, vanilla, and so forth, then that's going to be a fried uh, pancake we call a pednon in French. And finally, if I mix half of the pâte à choux and half mashed potato, and uh, you drop them in boiling uh, oil as well, I mean hot oil, and you would have the pomme dauphine, and so forth. And I'm sure that I forget many of those, so it is a very important dough to do. So you bring your milk, uh, butter to a boil, maybe a dash of salt, then a dash of salt. Okay. And as soon as it boils, you add the flour. The flour is not sifted. As you can see, it's boiling here. I remove it from the boil and drop the whole thing in one shot. Don't try to go slowly, it doesn't work and mix it together. I could have a, a pot slightly bigger than that one, but... the thing will cohere together. Whoop! I put it back on top of the stove here to cook it for a couple of minutes to crust the bottom. So you can see it comes out of the, the pan very easily, it has that type of texture. But you cook it for maybe one minute or two until the bottom of your pan, which now is really nice and black, until it forms, it stops getting crusty and it's a bit whitish, just to drain that out. And then, of course, we have to add the eggs to it. Okay. So this is... Whoop. The first part of the patachou. Okay. So you have to let it cool a little bit. You know, that first part of the dough, which is called a panade. 
P-A-N-A-D-E. In addition, a great specialty of Lyon that we call quenelle, quenelle of Lyon, is made the same thing with a panade and eggs and then the flesh of the fish. So many variations on that. Okay, so the dough has to be not cold, but not too hot because of the eggs. So, breaking the eggs inside. By hand, you would put one egg at a time. With the machine, I can put two. Remember the first time my wife did that. That's over 50 years ago. We were skiing and she came and did eggs and she tell me, look in the oven. I look in the oven, that mess going on. I say, what's going on? She said, that's your recipe. What? <laughs> so what she had done, it, she did her panade like that, put the eggs in it and mix it. Of course, it cooked the egg. The egg was scrambled. So. Okay. Another two eggs. And that's it. Let's see. Beautiful. All right. Okay. You know, when you have something very gooey like this, actually one of the best way to clean up that knife is uh, you empty the mixture, most of it, and you put your knife back into the machine and just turn it for like two or three seconds, and it clean up your knife. Okay. Uh, I am going to take a little bit here to do some, uh, to do maybe some gougere with that. As I say, you could mix some of it with mashed potato to do something else. I'm going to take some more here to do maybe the dessert. Okay. And then the rest of it, I'll use it in a pastry bag. Okay, I have a pastry bag here. When you use pastry bag, make sure that the thing fits at the end. If you think that it's going to be runny, which we could, push some of that in there. Turn the side, not to get it dirty. Put that in something like this. Makes it a bit easier to fill it up. Okay. So here I have my plan, patashu. So this would be for the gougere. And what I'm putting it in there is, uh, whoop, you can put different type of cheese. I have gruyere here. That would be very good. Remember that I, I didn't really have any seasoning. So here I'm going to put pepper, a dash of salt, maybe a little dash of paprika. Okay, mix that together. And conventionally, if you do a lot of it, of course, you put it in a pastry bag. But 
but for me, I'm going to put it directly in this. And you can do, of course, any size, size you wish. My mother, you know, I remember also when we were a kid, she made shoe. And I'm like that. She never used a pastry bag in her life. The shoe, all the profit roll were placed like this on the, which is perfectly fine. Okay. Well, I need more space here, so I'll stop there. For the for this, I would put probably a bit of a Parmesan cheese on top, or another type of cheese. That's it. Good. So that would be one part of it. If I do them about the same size, the other one that I cook it together. So here I have my bag. You bring one. You want to extend this. Fold it like an accordion. Bring it here and then you twist. You twist and you press. You only press with that part of the hand. Not with this. If you open here, press, it goes back up. So, the little uh, profit roll would be about that side. You stop and you bring it back up. That would be about the side of profit roll. Okay, when you do uh, so-called shoe, it would be about that side. Stop and push up. You can do the puy d'amour, as I was saying, which is going to be about that size. You can do éclair, even with another dough like this. That type of thing. Uh, even round one like this. And uh, you can do some swan, you know, where you press it like that and pull out to do a long tail like this. And then after you put a little neck, that would be swan. Okay, so the variation is almost, oh, yeah, I need that, I forgot. And then with that, I can show you also to do some gnocchi. Uh, I'm going to put that in the oven first, right? So here, for example, you can use a brush to take the tail out of this. Not only you take the tail out of this, but you you brush it with uh, with egg. You can do it with your, your finger as well. Like this. Now with this. So if you do a large one like that, that would be a centenary cake. Okay, the brush out of those. I have known, I was working with a chef who always put brush eggs to brown the egg and then left it outside like 15, 20 minutes so, so that egg dry out and put in another layer of that to make it really very shiny. So that's about, we can start with those to put in the oven. Okay, so we've done a lot with your pata shoe. Again, I have the same one to do what I'm going to do next, but where I probably would mix the pata shoe with uh, some, uh, some cheese. But in that case here, you do the gnocchi. So you grab this, boiling water, 
Put that on the edge of your pan and you press and you cut. You know, that's how you do the little gnocchi Parisian gnocchi. And you serve that usually with cheese, olive oil, a bit of uh, uh, basil with it. I'll go inside here. And of course, I could have a larger one to make them slightly bigger. I could have um, a fluted one to get another look. You see, they're going to come to the top and poach now. They poach about, for those, about probably four or five minutes. That would be enough. And after four or five minutes, you lift them up, cool them with cold water, ice. As soon as they are cold, you take them out and that's it. So you can have that couple of days ahead. If you have a little gratin, you put a dozen of those in a little gratin dish, some sauce, some cheese, up in the oven. So that's a nice way of doing it. Here I have uh, my temperature here is about right, about 3, 375. So uh, we can do the other part. I have more patachu here. And in that case, I'm going to put a bit of sugar to it, a little bit of vanilla. What was classic in that recipe, we used to do it with the orange water blossom. You know, it was always flavored with that. And as I said, without the sugar, of course, and the vanilla, if I do half of this with potato and half of this too, we have the classic pomme dauphin. But otherwise, this one, you would do it. So as you can see here, I push with my hand, don't go far from it. Push it and let it hang, push it down. Here is a small one here. That's it. You can see that those are basically ready. So as you probably know, the gnocchi, the standard gnocchi, Italian gnocchi is done with potato. That's why it's called the gnocchi Parisian. That's a Parisian gnocchi done with the patachou but you can basically have the same type of sauce. And if you do the canela I was mentioning before, which is the mixture of this with the flesh of fish and all that, and again, it's done with lobster sauce and so forth. You can see the center of this would be like a little canel. Hmm? Yeah, that's cooked enough. Cooked enough considering that it has to go back into the oven with whatever sauce you're going to do with it. So I can remove it. And as I said, in a restaurant, if you want to do that ahead or if you do it ahead at home, you cool them up first under cold water and drain them and then keep that in the refrigerator. Okay. I can leave that here. So here, I have the fritter, as you can see. They tend to burst a little bit and open. And conventionally, on top of that, you put powder sugar, a lot of powder sugar. So it's about six, seven different types of things that I showed you with patachou, and there is many more. So it's really worthwhile to know how to do it. I did it with milk, one cup of milk, one cup of, um, one cup of uh, flour, five eggs four eggs, depending on the side of the egg. And uh, often I do it with water. Sometimes it's done with milk, sometimes with water. Okay. Now the shoe are ready, the profiterole are ready. Even the gnocchi I have in the oven here. Whoop. The, the little gnocchi, as you see, can blow up in the oven. I put a little bit of uh, cheese on top of it and uh, a dash of cream in the bottom. Conventionally, really done with 
more tomato sauce or stuff like this. But this is a very delicate type of gnocchi to eat that you serve right away because, of course, it's going to deflate. But uh, this is beautiful. I'm going to have a piece here and burn my mouth. Mm. Mm. Salt. That's it. So this is your gnocchi, which I'm going to put here. Now I have the fried the fritter here. And as you know, when they get out of the hot oil, often people put that on a on a paper with a, on a plate lined up with paper and so forth. I've learned from the the Korean who do a lot of fried food, the best way is to put it on a wire rack. You see the, the oil dropped on the bottom but it stays dry on the bottom. If you put it on that towel, then it gets moist underneath, it develops moisture. So this is it. And what you want to do in this, a lot of, uh, well, that's your, your freighter. Good, like this. Then we have we have the gougere here. Remember the gougere are the one with the cheese inside. You know, the cheese, you see they are very airy inside. Paprika, cheese on top. That's good. The gougere. Mm, this one is halfway eaten, so I put it underneath. This is the little profiterole. So those profiteroles usually are cut open and stuffed with ice cream. As you can see, they are very hollow. Stuffed with ice cream and served with a chocolate sauce. This is the classic way of serving profiterole. And again, the same dough. Bigger here, as you can see. This is the shoe, very light. The shoe, conventionally, what you would do is to make a hole in the bottom like this. You fill a pastry bag with whipped cream, don't answer it when they are cold, of course. So this is your shoe. This is the Puy d'Amour, I was saying. This is the long um, éclair, again, which are usually stuffed this way, either with ice cream and glazed on top. And this is the, the, um, the swan. I didn't do a neck, usually I do a neck, but what you do, you cut the front. I mean, now it's, they are still hot, so it's not really the right way of doing it. But you cut this. You fill that up with pastry cream. You glue that to it, to the pastry cream, that the wing. And then we have a little nail, uh, a little neck that we do here with the dough as well. So those are all variations on my pâte à choux, which I hope you're going to do at home. Thank you for watching.